Rock and roll. <laughs> Welcome back to Rich Words Music, where today I'm joined by Mr. Lee Fuge. Thanks for having me. Did I say your name right? Lee Fuge, you did indeed. I absolutely did. So we're at 42 Gear Street here at Henning Pauli's place in Germany. And what me and Lee are doing today is checking out these brand new Ibanezes that neither of us has ever seen or videoed before. Particularly you, if I'm correct. Yeah. Or is this your third video of <laughs> the day? My third with video with these guitars today. Yeah, and we're filming this at the end of August 2021. They come Indeed. out these guitars in September 2021. On the 1st of September. So they're absolutely fresh. I'm guessing you're going to be seeing this when they're kind of fresh, hot off the presses. And what we're going to basically do is give you a little bit of a rundown of these guitars, tell you what they can do. Lee is a rather expert player, at least compared to my level. If you know my channel, you know what I'm talking about. So we'll make some sounds and we'll talk about the specs and the features as we always do. So they look like strats. They do. They, they sort do. of feel like strats. And they kind of are. Ibanez's take on a slightly more traditional strat, aren't they? Yes, they are. So they, they're derived from the AZ series. So anyone who knows what the AZ series is, they're sort of like thousand pounds, thousand euros plus, sort of Ibanez's current go-to sort of premium guitar range. Yeah. These are the AZ ES series, and ES meaning essentials. So they're like stripped back, much more budget friendly versions of the same guitars. So yeah, these are fantastic. And what we were essentially just told by Dan from Ibanez is that these were designed to be student guitars. Yes. In fact, and the, the price point that they're currently at is for the, the three single coil version, 299. We're yep, talking 299. euros here and you'll pay 330 for the version with a humbucker at yeah. the bridge, won't you? So we're in pretty affordable territory, kind of Squire Classic vibe, almost even yeah, a little yeah. bit less than Squire Classic vibe. Yeah, Squire Classic vibe, um, sort of lower end Epiphone price points. I think you can get some stuff from like guys like Jackson in the same price point. Even Ibanez have guitars in, in that price point. So yeah. it's, it's a really easy price point for most people to hit. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. But these are definitely sort of at the more sort of classic end of the spectrum. And I've got a mm. cheat card here so we can look at some of the specifications. So we've got a, a maple neck here. The mm -hmm. fretboards are Jatoba. Again, yes. I mean, I often say on my channel that I would like to see Rosewood on guitars like this. And I know that Psy teasers meant that we can't really do that, especially yeah, at yeah. budget price points, but we've got a Jatoba fretboard, we're gonna to have to live with it. The frets are medium, and again, this was something that Dan from Ibanez said that was mm. tailored towards the students, a slightly smaller fret size to yeah. get them more into the electric guitar, that kind of thing. The pickups on it are Ibanez Essentials, which I guess is their most affordable kind of pickups, right? Yeah, I, I'm not sure whether or not they were voiced for the guitars or whether they are just pickups that are in the Ibanez catalog, but yeah, they, they're Ibanez's own sort of windings. I'm not sure if they're voiced in any particular way that they had sort of envisioned, but they sound great. I think they've gone for sort of classic mm. strat sort of territory. So the bodies on these are poplar. The pickups, you can see you've got three way, three way, you've got three single coils on yep. these, you've got a humbucker in the bridge here, and we've both got a, spe a special switch there, I should say. And what that does is kind of, they call it an alter switch. So it kind of yep. gently, subtly alters the voicing by switching between parallel and serial settings between the pickups, yep. doesn't it? So yeah. I think we're not entirely sure what that does on any given pickup setting, but it is available on the Ibanez website. So I'll put some links down there in the description. You can go and find out exactly what each of these settings does. Five-way standard switch, as you'd expect on a Strat, and that's pretty much it, really. The, yep. other, the other thing that I wanted to mention, which I also think is kind of cool, is the fact that the single pickup, sorry, the single coil one is... <laughs> Hardtail. Completely hardtail, yeah. And I find that very, very cool on a Strat, particularly a budget one. You don't often see that. I don't think Squire makes any hardtail Strats at the moment, do they? Uh, some of the super, super cheap bullet Strats are hardtail. Can you but, get a hardtail one? But I mean like the ones that are like 90 pound, like yeah. real bottom level. Okay, so ones. the string through bridge yeah. ones, yeah. yeah. These are slightly different. They're slightly more upmarket than that. We've got a close-up cam here that I can go to and just show you that I've got a standard Whammy here, it's generic, no-name hardware, but I've given it a bit of a wobble before we've started to play, and it seems to hold tune fairly well. Yeah. The rest of the hardware is also kind of generic, so the tuners as well, but they seem to also hold tune pretty well, from yeah, what yeah. I've heard. Yeah, they seem pretty solid to me. Yeah, so a very, very solid sort of beginner's student's instrument that does mm. a wide range of tones, and that's what we're going to demonstrate a little bit for you now. Cool. I guess what we should probably do is just go through the pickup settings, right? Yeah, no, so do you want to start with a clean sound? Yeah. Play us some of your stuff, because I don't know if you guys are familiar with Lee's channel, but he's a 
a rather versatile guitarist and we're going to be shooting another video this weekend where we talk about the the covers bands mm. that you do and the sets that you play and you require yeah. guitars and tones to do a wide variety of genres don't mm. you yeah so everything from like funk and pop to classic rock and everything in between so yeah i'll uh, we'll start with some clean sounds do you want to start with the bridge or the neck pickup go from the neck go, from go the down neck. to the bridge yeah cool so this is with the altar switch in the down position so even though the altar switch does a load of different things, the way I always imagine it is that in the down position, it's just the pickups as intended. So on a Strat style, it's obviously bridge, bridge and middle, middle, middle and neck, and neck. The altar switch kind of, it doesn't put them out of phase, but it's that series parallel thing. So it kind of revoices the five positions. Yeah. So you can kind of imagine it's almost like having 10 pickup positions available. Yeah. That's kind of how I see it. Yeah. There's probably a more technical explanation than that, but that's the way my brain sort of works that process out. Did you actually find that kind of thing useful on a guitar? For studio stuff, yes. Yeah. Live, if there was a specific sound, yeah, but I probably wouldn't actively mess with it too much live unless there was like a song where I thought oh I really need that sound yeah. because nine times out of ten you just want something pretty standard to get you through a gig anyway yeah. so yeah like the five way switch would be enough for me for nine, nine out of ten gigs yeah okay yeah. cool give us some tones then. go from the neck then That was a bad note. I mean, that, that one's quite bright. That is just a bridge single coil feel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Those are always a bit sharp, aren't they? That actually sounds really good, though. Yeah, it's really versatile. Overall. Does the tone control work across all the pickups? I believe it does. So it's like a master tone. Mm. Yes. Very nice. I think on the neck and on the kind of honky sort of in-between positions, mm. it sounds pretty fat. The neck I like pickup, it. I love that kind of responsive twang. It's that kind of Stevie Ray Vaughan kind yeah. of Texas blues thing. Really nice. It does sound really fat. We've forgotten to say what amp we're playing through today, and the amp yes. is the... the... I forgot the name, it's on the floor. <laughs> the Rev Gen 100, which is that purple thing behind Rich, if you just lean to the side. Other side. Oh, that, <laughs> that thing there. This one. Yeah. That's what we're playing through on so that's the. That's what we're playing. We're on the. I believe clean we're on channel. the. Yeah, we're on the clean channel, which is almost sacrilege because that amp has got about three thousand channels, and everything else. And there's also, I actually think that's the one that we're auctioning off as well, the Gear Street watermelon amp. I think it's one of those. Not that oh, exact same one, model. but I think it's the same model. Yeah. But yeah, it's an, it's a really cool amp. But we are literally using it on the clean channel because the clean channel sounds really good. Yeah, and that's also the kind of. When you when you start playing guitar, you're supposed to kind of start on clean, aren't you? Yeah. Kind I of. I think so. Yeah. What I reckon we should do is I'm going to give you this one. Okay. Let's hear the, the humbucker on the clean as well and just hear how they sound. They're quite nice in terms of weight as well. Like, they're, yeah. they're lightweight guitars, but they don't feel like a toy or anything. No. They no, feel exactly. like real guitars. And, you know, with a poplar body and a maple neck, it's going to feel... It's a good combination. Sort of real. So, yeah. 
I'm really impressed it's with these. It's interesting that they're sort of designed for students because I would gig one of these. Like, I would happily take one of these I, out and yeah, play. I don't think you'd have any problem whatsoever no. doing that. I wonder how much these have been set up by Ibanez before they made their way to us. Mm. That would be that would be really interesting to know. But yeah, If I mean, they come out of the box like this, these will destroy the lower-priced guitar market for the rest of this year because these will sell. Yeah, that's the if big they question. Come out of the box how they like come this. out of the yeah. box? Exactly. Yeah, because the necks feel great as well. Like yeah. it's a the front uh, ends are perfect too. Yeah. How would you describe the neck profile? For me, it's it's a C shape and it's it's not thin. It's not chunky no, either, but it's, it's a nice, not... comfortable sort of C shape in the hand. It feels really, really good. What they've kind of gone for, I think, is sort of like a vintage feel. Like it's sort of it's got that kind of '80s super strat kind of fatness yeah. about it. Yeah. I've got a couple of '80s Kramers which have a similar neck profile. They're slightly rounder. Fat in the hand, so yeah. Yeah. Are you guys filming? What are you guys filming? These these dudes said it's free right here. Well, they're lying. Do I have waffle on my face? <laughs> not anymore. What are you guys doing? We're filming the Ibanezes because I'm the last person to have not done that. But you can't film them before September 1st. Today is before we, September 1st. I shan't publish the video until September 2nd. Or September 3rd, which is my birthday, when I might receive one of these from Ibanez as a present. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Cool. Cool. Do you want to play? Sorry, I burst, burst <laughs> you did it in, into your video. You've burst into a lot of my videos over the years. In fact, the gloves on the other foot now, or hand, or shoe, or whatever you say, because this is the first time I'm actually here as a level pegging YouTube. Like, like, like as a real I'm not a brand counting person, person. To abuse and just say, you know, controversial <laughs> I things. I can abuse you, you being a, a YouTuber just the same, Rich. You can, yeah. Uh, then, I'm sorry I burst in the video. You do your thing, and we come back when you don't do your thing no more. Okay, That's we a double negative. Long, but we're both very quick. Do you want to play while you're here? Nah, it's not happiness. It might be the only thing you play all weekend. <laughs> These look, this color looks really this, nice. This, this, is amazing. Yeah, that's ugly. But this, <laughs> that's not ugly. What do you know? You had a you're guitar. Welsh. You had a guitar that color. One of your volos was that color. We, should, we don't say the V word in an Ibanez video. Don't say V in an Ibanez video. Shame. <laughs> Bye, Henning. Bye. Oh. Anyway. Anyway. Where were we? Uh, we were talking about this one, uh, and I said that these are going to blow up. The oh yeah, we were talking about how good they were. Yeah. yeah, that was the thing. We were saying how, yeah, I mean, because like I was saying, these are similarly priced to Squire Classic Vibe. That's yeah. the main thing that I'm thinking of. Those mm. are a little bit more expensive, and those have a different feel to them. That's for yeah. sure. But there's definitely a vintagey feel I, to these. Though. I can imagine these things being really, really popular. Yeah, I me like too. it a lot so far. So let, yeah, let's hear. The humbucker on the, the yes. clean challenge here. Yeah, because stacks up. we should have the same pickups here in the neck and middle. Yeah, that's pretty much. Oh, I don't know. Maybe that sounds a little bit fatter. Maybe there's a little more maybe low end response. Maybe a bit more push. Yeah. That might just be because obviously the body is going to be slightly different because of the rounding, yeah. maybe. Yeah. But they, they're pretty much. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're going to be the same pickups. Yeah. But yes, the uh, bridge humbucker. Nice, nice warm, fat sound, but obviously it's pushing a little bit more now than the single cars are. Yeah, I like it a lot though. I'm, I'm really impressed with that. And was it, was that the one that Dan said you could actually split and take it down to a single coil, the humbucker? It does with this if switch. You flick that switch. I can't remember whether in <laughs> position two it's it automatically splits or whether it's. I know one of the settings he showed us. It might be this one. Uses that coil with the middle. Up. Okay. So that should be like your traditional kind of strap position Strapping too. Tone, yeah. Yeah. Kind of sounds kind of honky. Split, yeah. A bit. 
It's very nice, yeah. whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> whatever it's doing, it's doing it good. It's doing it well. And that's uh, what we like. Yeah, I do apologize for not knowing every <laughs> stat just off the top of my head like I normally do in these videos. It's because these are new. It's because well, these though. are so brand new. I mean, this is literally my first time playing one in front of the camera. I mean, I yeah. know you've done a couple of videos, but for me, this is a this is a first time. But yeah, very once impressed are, so far. Once these are out as well, obviously the stats will be so widely available online, so everyone will know you know, what these things do. Yeah, exactly, yeah. But at the moment, we're sort of using, like, an unofficial spec sheet. Unofficial and, cheat card. And Dan showed us some stuff on his phone. So <laughs> it's sort of, you know, which we're figuring out as we go along. Yeah, that's how it goes at these <laughs> events. So should we maybe kick in just a little bit of overdrive and yeah, hear how they sound? Yeah. You want to do that one first, and then we'll do this one. Yeah, start with this one. So I'll start with the bridge pickup. Some great sounds out of this. I'm seeing that. It's very, very usable, isn't it? Yes. Let's try let's try the the three single coil yeah, yeah. version. Let's turn the old mute on. You're gonna have to suffer with my plane now. Go for it. Um, Lee's done. Ah! Cool feature that we didn't ah, mention yes. as we were plugging it in. Dan said that this Jacks. is kind of a new innovation. It's like a mm. single piece jack input, so you don't need to yeah. go messing around with screws. It's probably not gonna break. It feels very solid indeed. This is always kind of a weakness on budget mm. guitars, isn't it? I've it had is, so yeah. many where they just, they end up wobbling a little bit and then at some point the whole thing just yes. dies on you, doesn't it? What I would like to know is obviously with these being plastic, I'd like to know how durable they would be with heavy use. Yeah. They feel pretty sturdy, so they definitely feel like they can take a beat in. That's an interesting point because, yeah, I mean, it, it's plastic at the end of the day. It's quite thick. It feels very sturdy, yeah. and obviously you've got metal screws there, but, yeah. I mean, do you think it was a cost-saving measure to do that, or do you think it was an actual thing where they thought this would be better than the cheapest metal version that we can use? I'd like to think it was because it would be better than the cheapest metal version. Yeah, me too. But... And obviously with it being one piece, especially if these are aimed at students or new players, it's one less thing to worry about because a lot of people don't do any guitar maintenance when they first start playing. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about the input jack falling off and getting stuck inside the guitar. Yeah. So yeah, I'd like to think that. I'd like to think that too. So that's what we're gonna go with. Whatever it is, <laughs> it's, it's there, it's a new feature. And I think that, yeah, I, I feel like every aspect of this guitar has been thought through yeah. in, in a way that, so. you know, it's 2021, we can design a, yeah. an EZ, ES, strap type guitar that's just a little bit different. Yeah. We can think about what current players want, what they need, and instead of including some features that they might not need, some stuff that they might not want, they've thought, okay, we're gonna stick that on because it's something that's just useful. Mm. We're gonna stick that in because it's something we can just use, and we're gonna make this one hardtail because yeah. it's gonna be more tuning stability, isn't it? Yeah. That's Absolutely. the other thing about that. Right, I'm gonna play some crunch on this one. We'll just use the bridge pickup because that's all I really use. some of my indie. I like it. What more can you say? I mean, what, for me, that's... One thing that's really interesting about when you started playing the bar chords then, 
is usually with lower priced and budget pickups. When you start playing more and more notes, they get really muddy and messy sounding. Yeah. But that retained the clarity, which is interesting. Yeah. So that's that's a really good sign for newer players because, you know, it, it sounds like a more expensive guitar then. Yeah. Well, what It's I, got that clarity. Yeah, I was also on the middle pickup setting there, which I quite often use because Albert Hammond Jr. from The Strokes always would use that setting. Right. He's got a signature Strat, and he's basically always on that, and he's basically always doing their rhythm sounds, and he's using a slightly lighter crunch, but he's always just doing kind of bar chords like this, mm. like all the time. That's what he spends his sets doing, always in downstrokes, and yeah, for that, even with, this, even with the crunch on. It works, it's yeah, pretty good. It's really I, good. If I go to the bridge, it's a little bit sort of harsher, but... Kind of a nice harsh, though. Yeah, I mean, it's not it's a nice super bite. brittle. It's not like head taking mm. off sort of territory. It's yeah. very, very nice. I'm impressed with these. Yeah, they sound great. Yeah. I don't know what else to say about them, we really. We can ramp up the gain. Let's try it. Let's try and do some... Fake metal. So what we <laughs> with what single we, coils. <laughs> yeah. So we've got the rev on the clean channel, but we've got the JHS double barrel here. So we previously had the the left side on, which is is that like a blues breakery side? I think so. And what we've now got on is both sides together, which is a tube screamer plus blues breaker. Uh, maybe. I, I don't actually know. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that this side is. Can we even see that? No, we can't see it. It's the morning glory, and there the. Go. JHS Something. Tube Screamer type pedal. We'll go with that. Whatever that is. We'll go with it being a Tube Screamer. Yeah, and I think we're running the Blues Breaker into the Tube Screamer. It has a clean so blend as well, so you can blend in like the bypass signal, which Must is quite cool. Must be a Tube Screamer then, so yeah. Yeah, let's, right. let's go with Tube Screamer. That, that works, it sounds all right. Mm. There's not much character to the tone. Let's just mute it. I wanna hear the humbucker on that setting. And then we're gonna decide which of the two that we would pick. So the humbucker is obviously instantly quieter because it's a humbucker. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> John Brown chord. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> that sounds really good. I, yeah, that I sounds like really good on the, on the high gain. Let's swap the guitar so you can play this one as well, because I want to hear your fingers playing this guitar on the slightly higher gain setting. Really nice sound. <laughs> it sounds really, yeah. really good. I'm into that. That's a really cool sounding guitar. So if you were to pick one of these two to take home with you after this event, mm. theoretically, which one would it be? I mean, would you want to have a humbucker in the bridge, or do you find that kind of whammy over hardtail is kind of a decisive factor for you? Um, for me, I love the versatility of that. 
But, oops, oh, I've broken something. <laughs> um, not the guitar, Dan, don't worry. It was, it was something that Heading owns, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I really like this one, though. I love the colour, but I feel like this guitar, I don't know, there's just something about it. I don't know if it's this one I'm holding, but I really like this. So even though I don't normally use a, a bridge single, if I had to pick between the two of them right now, I'd probably take this one. If yeah. this had, if the triple single had a vintage trem, any day of the week, that'd be perfect. Okay. I wonder if they do make that as an option as well, mm. because because this is a student guitar, there might be more. Yeah. But yeah, for me, I would probably also edge towards this one. I mean, an HSS style guitar is always going to be more versatile. It's yeah. always going to give you more options, but I feel like there's more life in that yeah, single that's, coil that's somehow. Yeah, there's, there's something about this. There's just a bit more vibe to it. Yeah. And also that neck heel. I know the old one's got it as well, but how many other 300 euro guitars do you have such a cool carved out neck heel on? It's pretty sweet, isn't it? Yeah, that's something that usually only happens on high end guitars. Yeah, and the other thing I would also say for me personally is the hardtail. Yeah. I mean, I do not use one of these hardly ever. I'm not really a Strat player at all. I right. recently got my first Strat and it's a massive learning curve for someone who's never really used it. I'm mainly mm. a telly sort of a player. And I just think that this is gonna offer, as well as kind of being more at home for me, it's gonna give extra yeah. tuning stability. Yeah, absolutely. But Which yeah. at this price point is quite important. Yes, and they are. They do seem pretty stable with tunings. Like, you know, we've given them a bit of a hammer in today. And I know, like, obviously they've been used in a lot of videos by other channels as well, so they're holding up. Yeah, and when I think about it, this is like, this is a standard for student guitars in 2021. Mm. Can you remember the first guitars that you played back in the day? Oh, they were terrible. Yeah, they were awful. I, I wish guitars, uh, what would be considered a budget guitar, was this good when I started playing. Yeah. This, yeah. this would have been like a mid-priced guitar when I started. Yeah, exactly. I mean, everything about this one is so playable straight out of the box. I mean. It, we don't know if it's straight out of the box, that's the thing, but you know, the, the action on this, the fret ends, the, yeah. the way it's been finished, the intonation is fine. Yeah. It's all good. I've got nothing bad to say about it. No, neither do I. I really, I'm really, uh, really liking it. Yeah. I, I said earlier to Dan, I would take this out and gig it as it is. Like, if I was going to a gig tonight, I'd pick this guitar up and I'd happily take it and play it without, without even thinking twice about it. Yeah. And I think, as a guitar, what more can you look for? Yeah. If, if you're willing to to perform with it and use it as a tool, then the company have achieved their goal. But yeah, exactly, somehow yeah. keeping it in this price point is insane. It's mad, isn't it? It makes you think as well, what would they do if they'd spec a 500 euro guitar? Yeah. Or some at twice the price? Well, I mean, we know what they do with AZ guitars, but still, yeah. there you go. So this has been the Ibanez AZES40. And this is the AZES31. So take your pick, three single coils or HSS, Leave a comment down there and tell us which you preferred. But I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'd like to take the opportunity just to thank Lee for being in the video. Thanks for having me on. And to thank Henning and everybody else for putting this 42 Gear Street event on. It's only the first day as we're shooting this, but it's been quite fun so far. Yeah, it's been a fun day. Bunch of awesome people here, bunch of awesome YouTubers. Thank you to Bo who is producing, switching in the back room. Thank you to everybody else. But I've been Rich for Rich Words Music and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.